Hey everybody here on YouTube and welcome. Uh, we are recording Q&A number two today. Uh, this one's a little bit different than the last one I recently published. Um, these are questions that I got on Saraha. So Saraha is an online platform and um, mobile app where you can leave constructive criticism and feedback or comments, questions, whatever you want to somebody who has a Saraha account. So I got these quite a bit of time ago, um, but I didn't have anywhere to respond to these because I didn't want to just like jam them all on Twitter. Um, so I thought that a video would be a good vehicle to actually answer some of these questions. People that play Tron are evil. Uh, no, you're evil for saying that. I just want you to know that you're great, but you should step up in your casting cruel ultimatums game. Um, actually, the Powered Cube is coming uh, online again, and I don't know if it's going to have cruel ultimatum, but the modern cube did. And that was my very first time casting Cruel Ultimatums, period, because uh, I didn't really play Standard back then. Um, so, one, I very much enjoyed it. Two, I want to keep doing it. So I really hope the Power Cube has it, and I am right on it. Uh, any plans to go to other GPs this year to play or cover? Um, I'm definitely going to GP Indie, the Team GP, in um, at the beginning of January, or like mid-January, I think it is. Um, other than that, I'm not 100% sure. I'm pretty likely to go to the team events, and besides that, I'm not 100% sure which GPs I'm going to play in. On the subject of coverage, I'll just lump in another question that I've gotten a ton, which is, uh, why are you doing coverage less? And basically, it's to focus on my stream. Um, I was trying to juggle both at the same time, and it was really, really hard, uh, both between the travel that it takes to get to some of the places where coverage happens, and the really unreliable internet that you get at hotels. Uh, so when you're traveling, you get like really spotty, bad hotels, and I would try to bring my laptop so that I could stream on the go, because um, it's really important when you're streaming to, to do it on a daily basis. And as a result, I kept missing a ton of stream days, and I would get home and be super tired from like these long, super long trips uh, with really bad jet lag, and it was always really hard to get back into the swing of things. So by trying to do both at the same time, I think I ended up doing each one a little bit worse, and I really wasn't happy with that. Um, so I took a step back from coverage to really focus on the stream. Uh, that doesn't mean that I won't cover any events in the following year. I might do a couple of GPs here and there, uh, but that's generally why you've seen that shift. Uh, any plans for more cosplay in the future? Um, so for those who may have not seen it, I have a vlog at GP Vegas um, where I cosplayed as Nyssa. And it was my first time doing like a full on magic cosplay. I've cosplayed as uh, Link and Zelda from The Legend of Zelda before um and those were my very first like cosplays um so doing this was a big endeavor and honestly i get so much respect for cosplayers after i cosplayed because it is hard like i picked nissa because i wanted to be a character that could also play the gp because at gp vegas i did coverage but i also got to play the events um while the legacy gp was going on which i wasn't doing coverage of and I was like walking around, like trying to hold my deck, holding my staff. I had people hold my staff. And then eventually it was like so hot because it was Vegas and that was wearing this like elf costume. So um, I got a ton of respect for people who do it. I don't have any plans to do like big cosplays coming up, but as you guys know me, I always do lazy cosplays. So uh, we'll see more of those, I'm sure. Uh, what was your dream job as a kid? Uh, this, 100%. Uh, also, this was not a job when I was a kid. Uh, streaming was not a thing when I was a kid. Uh, hey Gabby, big fan. What got you into the game of Magic and or streaming? Um, I got into Magic. My friend Jose uh, gave it to me as a birthday gift. A uh, deck builder's toolkit. Uh, really long time ago now. I think it's been like six or seven years. Um, and at the time we me, Jose, and some of the other people that I worked with um, started getting together over lunch to build these like really crappy tabletop, like kitchen table magic decks. Um, and we kind of went from there, uh, started getting more into the FNM, started liking that. So I started going to, you know, like, um, like 5Ks or 1Ks. I started going to PTQs. Eventually I started flying to Grand Prix. Uh, it was a whole thing that took a period of time, but I kind of started out, like I said, very much kitchen table magic, and then I grew from there. Um, with regards to streaming, that was a little bit different. Um, I had gotten to a point uh, with magic where I was feeling that I, my fun at an event was really tied up with how well I did in an event, and I felt like that was a really um, destructive cycle. 
And if you guys want to hear something about this, like I'd be happy to talk about it in another video. It's like, it would be delving into a longer subject. Um, but basically, if I wasn't doing well at an event, I would not feel good about going to the event. And I started feeling like I was getting trapped, right? So I would go to a PTQ on Saturday or Sunday, spend a long time driving to wherever the PTQ was, um, get off to a bad start. And then they'd be like, why did I even do this? So stupid. Like I could have been doing something fun with my Saturday or Sunday. And instead I'm just like here, not happy to be here. Um, so I started playing, um, I started streaming because I wanted to have a different axis on which I enjoyed magic. And honestly, it did wonders for me. I no longer feel like when I go to a tournament, it's never tied up to how well I do. Obviously I want to do well, like it's, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not an animal, <laughs> but it's never like my enjoyment of the event, my enjoyment of the experience is no longer tied up to how well I actually did in the event. If I did good, great, you know, but if I did bad, there's so much that I enjoyed out of it. <laughs> Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night, glance over to my wife sleeping soundly, and all I see is your chinchilla's face on our cat. <laughs> This last one isn't really a question, but it was such a heartfelt comment and it meant so much to me. So I just wanted to say thank you uh, for sending this. It says, hi, Gabby. Thanks for having such an awesome stream. Your stream is such a friendly and welcoming place and I appreciate all your hard work in making it like that. I've actually had a bunch of friends move away and some personal life issues rear their heads. So it's really nice to hang out with you in the stream for a bit. Uh, people like you go such a long way towards making the magic community so inclusive and approachable. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. That means so much to me. Uh, this is the reason, or this is one of the main reasons why I stream. So hearing that it is having a positive effect on some people just means everything to me. All right, that uh, does it for this q and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you would like to leave me some message on Sarah Ha, I still have it open. Uh, you can get to it on uh, gabbysparts.sarahha.com, but I'm going to put a link in the description below if you want to find it that way better. Um, you can leave questions, suggestions, if you want to see a different kind of video, feel free to also leave that in the comments. And if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe for more. Um, thanks again for watching YouTube. I'll see you later.